Hey guys, Jill here from Ask a Vet Tech. So you have a tick on your pet and you need some help. You've come to the right place. I have over 10 years of experience dealing with these buggers and I have some great tips to help you out. I have heard tons of tips and tricks over my years and only a few of them actually work without hurting your pet. The best way to remove ticks are as followed, but please don't freak out. I want you to watch these few extra seconds of this video. It's not going to undo or do any more damage than your pet has already encountered. First, let's talk about the bad ones. Vaseline applied to the butt of the tick will not allow him to breathe to come out. This is simply not true. They breathe through two small holes called spiracles at the underside of the rear legs. They have plates over top of them. They can close these plates to cover the holes at any time. They do not need much oxygen either, like they only breathe every few hours, so smothering them really won't work unless you've got all day to wait. If it does work, the tick is still attached and you will have to pull it out anyway, so let's just skip this step. The second tip I've heard is to pour rubbing alcohol on the tick. Let's think about this for just a second. The tick chewed a hole into your pet and is now ingesting blood from your pet. This means there's a wide open wound that you're about to pour rubbing alcohol into. How do you think your pet's going to feel about that? It's not going to get into the breathing hole, so what's the point of wasting the alcohol and burning your pet? So here is the best way to get rid of a tick off of your pet. You're going to have to man up and not be scared of the tick. The only place that they can actually bite from is their mouth. So their legs and all those things that are sticking out of your pet are not going to harm you. Part the hair away from the tick. Either grab a hold of the tick with your fingers or a set of tweezers. Then simply pinch down just a little, pull, the tick will slip out through the body. Do not squeeze the tick super hard though, like you're going to pinch something. You want to just grab a hold of it and remove it. Like you're going to remove a sliver from yourself. You want to do it very gently. Pull slow and steady until it comes out. If you missed the head and it broke off, please do not dig it out. Your pet's body will reject it. It is better to let it do its own job because it sees it as a foreign object and sends white blood cells to do damage control. It will allow it to heal much faster. The pet will develop like a scab over the area in a day or two. Don't pick it off. This is nature's band-aid. It'll fall off when it's healed or when the head gets expelled from the body. Sometimes you'll find a tick that is fully engorged and if it is walking away from its feeding site, then it's probably already fed for roughly 96 hours and is ready to go lay her eggs. This is not a tick you wanna let get out of your sight. You wanna get her and get her disposed up quickly. Now that the tick is out, what do you do with it? I'll flush him down the toilet because I want zero chance that it'll be returning. You can also put it in a jar of rubbing alcohol or you could smush it, but they have a really hard exoskeleton, so smushing it is not super easy. Then go back to your pet and clean up the area. Even if the head is still in there, I want you to just get a nice clean washcloth, wet it down, and wash that area. You need to let the body take care of itself. It is an amazing, amazing machine. It will clean itself from the inside out. Now, here's some education to go along with this video to help you understand them a little better so you're ready for the next encounter. I have had a lot of people ask me many questions and I've kind of compiled the list, so these might also be your questions. How long does a tick need to be attached before the diseases are transferred? Most of them are 24 to 48 hours, but Babesia can be transferred almost immediately. Can ticks transfer to humans? Yes, the answer is yes. Ticks need blood to lay eggs. Blood is blood. They don't care if it's your pets or yours. How do pets and people get ticks? They live outside mostly, right? Mainly ticks live in wooded areas or grassy areas where the grass is nice and tall, where deer can walk by, they can hop on, get a snack, and then move on. Though many people find them mowing their lawn or going for a hike, it's best to check you and your pet after each time you've been outside. Even if you just sat in the lawn chair, they can crawl up the leg of the lawn chair and get you. They can be pretty much anywhere outside, and they can even live in your garden, your flower bed, or in trees. Do ticks live on animals? The answer is no. They live in the environment outside. Why do ticks prefer to be around my cat's face and eye area? The reason is because they're undisturbed there. The cat cannot chew on the tick to pull it out. They don't like to dig really hard near their eyes, so they, pretty much the tick is safe, as long as we don't see it, to pull it off. 
Are ticks dangerous to dogs, cats, or humans? Yes, all three. Ticks can pass on some pretty nasty diseases to their victims. The most commonly heard of is Lyme disease. A bite from an infected deer tick happens. Then the lime is transferred from the infected tick's saliva into the bloodstream. From there, the disease travels throughout the body, wreaking havoc everywhere. For humans, it causes severe headaches, a bullseye-shaped rash, pain in the joints, muscles, and it can also cause skin color changes in humans. In dogs, most of the time we see joint pain or stiffness that seems to come and go, swollen lymph nodes, and major depression. How do I know if my pet has Lyme disease? It's a simple blood test that can be performed at your veterinarian's office for your pets. For humans, you have to go to your medical doctor. Another disease that can be transferred from ticks to people and animals is anaplasmosis. It's transferred the same way Lyme is. Infection causes pretty much the same thing as Lyme disease. Lameness in joints, pain, fever, very low appetite. Lyme disease and anaplasmosis have many of the same symptoms. So there is a test that your veterinarian's office can do that checks for both at the same time. There's another tick-borne disease that is pretty rough on your dog called Ehrlichiosis. It's usually carried by the brown dog tick. This one's rough. It causes fever, swollen lymph nodes, respiratory disease, weight loss, bleeding disorders. Most will be able to be treated by a course of antibiotics, but some might need supportive care and a blood transfusion. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever it has a vague and kind of non-specific signs that are kind of hard to tell if it is something big or just them being ill. They kind of have a poor appetite, some fever, some coughing, maybe muscle or joint pain. They get swelling of the face or legs and sometimes they have depression. They often get very wobbly. So treatment for this would also be antibiotic therapy and supportive care. The last but not least, Babesia. Babesiosis is a tick-borne illness that can be passed to the host almost immediately. It can present in a variety of clinical signs, ranging from sudden collapse. Dogs typically present with acute, severe, dark urine, fever, weakness, depression, and pale mucous membranes. Sometimes they have an enlarged spleen. Blood and urine tests may reveal anemia, low platelet numbers, and other signs can show up in the urine testing. I know it's scary to think that these little monsters are out roaming around free and we have to worry about them rather than them worry about us. It is a really good idea to wear the proper clothing when you're out and about and make sure that your pet is on some sort of flea and tick preventative. Preventatives work by the pet taking the medication or having medication applied to the skin and it absorbs through the skin. So the tick also will need to bite your pet in order for this medication to kill it. Sometimes you'll find ticks attached to your pet and you're like, oh my goodness, they're on preventative. Why is it attached? They can't repel the tick, but they can kill the tick as soon as it bites. So it prevents all of these infectious things from making any entrance into your pet. Typically a tick does not let go of its host until it's done feeding on blood meal. There are some great natural enemies to ticks that we love to have around. The first and foremost is spiders. Spiders eat ticks, so do lizards, and turkeys, and guinea fowl, and chickens, and possums. Possums will eat tons of ticks every year, and the bonus with them is they don't carry rabies. Frogs and toads will also eat them. There are a lot of plants that you can plant near your home to keep them at bay. So if you plant these things near your home, the chances of them coming into your house are very small. Most of the time, they ride in on a pet or on your clothes. That's how they get in. The purpose of this video was not to scare you and make you not want to go outside. It's to give you information to empower you to know what you need to do and look for when you're out and about. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I want to remind you, I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. Have a great day.